Hello and welcome. I'm Only Entropy, and this is my arcade controller build. Here's the timestamps for this video. All of the cigar boxes featured in this video come from Jerry's Tobacco Shop and Fine Wines in downtown Denver, located at 15th Street and Court. This is not to promote the use of tobacco, but they do have a great selection of cigar boxes, as you can see. But any local tobacco shop or cigar shop should have plenty of boxes on hand that they're dying to get rid of. Generally, two to three bucks a piece. So let's get started, shall we? Here I'm going to show you how to design the modifications and place your buttons. Here's a list of the things that you're going to need. Now, first off, you want to select the right case. Make sure that it's sturdy enough and that you have enough surface area on the top to accommodate all of your buttons, your joystick, the base plate that supports it, all of that, and spacing in between. Now, the one thing that people tend to overlook is the depth of the buttons. And if you're going with LED buttons, they tend to be pretty deep, about two and a half inches. If they're Sanwa or Suzo hat buttons, that's about what they'll be. And those are the kind of builds that I would recommend. Uh, the Japanese hardware is better than the Chinese knockoffs. But uh, at any rate, essentially, you're going to go from one side and then from another, measuring from one, one direction and then another to come to a common point or triangulate your position of where you're going to drill the hole. Uh, you can see how I'm doing this. Now, listed is a T-square or ruler. This is a roofing triangle and a Sharpie marker that I'm using, and that's so that you can kind of see what I'm doing. But you can see how I'm measuring from one side and then measuring from another direction and coming to that common point where I then mark off that spot with the Sharpie, like so. And when you're done, it's always a good idea to go back and uh, maybe emphasize, clean up your markers and make sure that uh, you got the right spot. When you're going to drill holes, you want to make sure that you create a little bit of a pocket or a, a gouge or divot for the drill bit to rest in so that you'll make an accurate hole and you don't get a drill bit just skipping around on the surface wildly. I know some people are laughing right now, but not everybody knows how to drill a hole. Don't laugh. This is how we learn. We all have to learn these things at some point. So in short, you find your position, your point, you mark it, and then you carve a, a little bowl shape. You rest the drill bit in that bowl shape, and then you commence drilling. And that's how you drill an accurate, straight, proper hole. Now, here I'm going to show you an example of what the finished result would look like. And uh, to my younger viewers, on a side note, whatever career path you're thinking of, I would strongly recommend considering some drafting classes. They're highly invaluable in daily life. Being able to read and create schematics for anything will be handy, whatever you decide to do with yourself. And uh, that's just on a, a personal note. For the four screw holes to mount the joystick, you will be using a 756th size drill bit and any corresponding screws and nuts. As to the button holes, button sizes differ. 
So you want to use a self-centering drill bit. That's what I'm using here. And the size will differ depending upon the button that you choose. Now with these kits, the buttons will have two diameters, an exterior diameter and an interior diameter. The exterior diameter, the bigger one, is the part that rests on top of the case. The interior diameter is the portion that will go inside of the holes. You can see me using the self-centering drill bit right now. It's sort of like a, a cylindrical saw-shaped drill bit with a drill bit inside of it. This is how they make those holes in doors that, uh, you know, doorknobs are, you know, fitted into, by the way. Uh, it's kind of a handy thing to have in your arsenal of tools and makes this job very quick, very easy, very clean. Uh, as you can see here, the uh, center drill bit came out, so I had to put it back in, tighten the set screw, and continued going. <clears throat> so they are a, a complicated kind of drill bit, but very easy to use. This whole build, you don't need any mechanical aptitude. There's no soldering involved with the buttons or the electronics, and provided you understand the instructions I'm giving you and how you plot your positions and how you drill your holes, it should go just fine. And uh, as to the type of uh, hardware that you select, well, that's up to you. But I would recommend going with the Japanese Sanwa buttons. That's what I'm using. It's a complete Sanwa build here. Uh, Suzo HAP or HAP hardware is also really good. Um, those are the two most recommended ones. Here's the zero delay chip, as you can see. Uh, this is where the buttons are placed. They're listed. There's the joystick pin placement. And uh, the opposite side is where the uh, voltage connections are for your LED lights generally speaking. Uh, they're marked on the reverse side of the chip, so you should have a pretty easy time plugging these uh, wires into, or these pin ports onto the pins uh, on the, the zero delay chip, as you can see me doing here. This is a uh, power connector that I'm putting in right now, that's a five volt. Uh, that's what the red indicates and the white, that is the pressure sensor from that particular button that I'm connecting right now. And uh, then I'm just going to snap that uh, uh, pressure sensor and uh, light into place into the button. You can see I'm uh, screwing on the uh, plastic nut that uh, holds the button into place and uh, goes on pretty easily. This is, this is how simple these builds are. And then you just put it in, press it in, and uh, give it a little turn. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but it snaps right into place. And the rest, you just kind of follow the same pattern. It's, like I said, very, very easy stuff. Um, there's no soldering. It's just pins and pin ports, and not that complicated. Having already recommended Suzo HAP, or preferably Sanwa hardware, um, I will tell you that you'll probably deal with 30 to 50 percent more in cost and you might have to pay for shipping and handling as well uh, especially if it ships out of Japan but uh, it's worth it it's worth the the difference even if, if it costs double the cost of, of the build the uh, you know the, the Chinese equivalent is 
it's not very good. I've done a couple of, of those builds and they really don't work very well together. Um, they're, they're cheap and we, we all know there's a big difference in terms of reputations when it comes to Japan's reputation with electronics and quality and business and the reputation that China has when it comes to electronics and quality control and business. So I would recommend you spend that little bit of extra money and go with the Sanwa hardware, the Suzo HAP, genuine arcade components, and not the cheap equivalent, whatever that may be. You will be disappointed if you go that direction. The buttons are mashy, they barely work, if at all, and you probably won't use it more than once. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section, and I'll try to help if I can. If you'd like to see more videos like this, also, please let me know in the comments section. Click the like button, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'm only Entropy.